The truth is coming out about a lot of these college football teams. And in week four, we had five great performances and we had five oh, absolutely regrettable performances from week four in college football. And of course, here on the Unafraid Show, we got to give you the list. But before we get into it, you guys make sure that you guys like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show. Come back on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 Pacific time for the lives, 4.30 Eastern time. And if you're in one of the middle states, you know how to do the math. Let's get to the five best performances in college football for week four. Number one, Illinois. They took care of business on Friday against Nebraska. Huge win, and Brett Bielema is doing a great job with his team, a 31-24 win. Now, this Illinois team playing really good defense, and they're getting good production out of their quarterback, Luke Altmaier. Brett Bielema has put together a team that at this point can't win the Big Ten Championship, but they can make sure that your team does not win the Big Ten Championship because they are going to be a nuisance. And if any of these top teams, Oregon, Ohio State, Penn State, or USC, whoever else is on their schedule, if you do not show up with your A game, Illinois is a team that can absolutely beat you and they put together a great performance versus Nebraska, who is much improved. This is not Nebraska that has lost seven consecutive losing seasons. This is a new day with Dylan Riola and Matt Rule, good football team now. Next team up, the Tennessee Volunteers. 25 to 15 win against Oklahoma in Norman. And Tennessee has shown that this show travels. They went to go play NC State, and that was a de facto away game, even though it was a neutral site game in Bank of America Stadium where the Carolina Panthers play. And now they've taken the show on the road to Norman, Oklahoma as well. And this defense is traveling. This defense looks like a potential national championship caliber defense. My only question about Tennessee is this offense. They're led by a freshman, Nico Iamalava, and I'm excited to see how this team progresses as the season goes on. And I told everybody, they will beat either Alabama or Georgia this year. They won't be both. They will get one of them this year. And then they'll lose to somebody they're not supposed to lose to. And next year, might come in as the number one team in the country, might be a team that is on a road to a national championship. But Josh Heupel is building a team the right way. We know he's going to put together a great offense, but he's putting together a complete team. Mm, great performance this weekend. Uh, the next team, Utah, 22 to 19 win over Oklahoma State. And you might be saying, George, how, how did Utah make this list with a three point win over Oklahoma State? Well, Oklahoma State was favored in the game, number one. And number two, Utah played with their backup quarterback, Isaac Wilson, true freshman. The kid was playing at Corner Canyon High School in Utah last year, and now he's starting for the Utes because Cam Rising was out again. And Utah, I want to tell you, you guys are liars when it comes to injuries. Now, I cannot wait until injury reports are for sure available in every conference. The SEC's doing it during their conference play, but everybody else needs to do it too because Cam, like, come on, man. When people said that Cam Rising was going to be out, then during the week, bread crummy, he'll be back. I was like, slow down. I will believe that Cam Rising is playing the second that he's on this field. But Utah has shown. Isaac Wilson, last year they won with Bryson Barnes, the, the pig farmer who was a former walk-on. Kyle Whittingham has built this program the right way. They are tough. They are physical. They are fast. And if you ever let this dude get a, get a hold of some five-star recruits on top of the development that he does for the rest of the team, Lord have mercy. You'd be looking at Georgia. But I digress. Next team up, Clemson. Clemson 59 to 35 over NC State and truthfully the game wasn't even that close you might be saying they gave up 35 points though yes that is concerning I don't care if it's garbage time or not you still gave up a lot of points and Tennessee beat this team I believe 51 to 10 and so on one hand you're like okay K Klubnik and this offense who have not consistently over the last what year or so put up good offensive numbers 
yes, they're putting them up now. And we're going to see if they're able to keep it up once they get against good competition. But this was a huge win for Clemson. Next one up. Oh, the Michigan Wolverines. Now, they could be on the best list and the worst list. Their offense could be on the worst list, but they're on the best list because they got a big win against USC. 27 to 24. Huge win. This team found a way. How do you win a football game setting the forward pass back? Seven for 12 for 32 yards for, for the Michigan passing attack. Oh, but it was a good thing they ran the ball 46 times for 290 yards, including 90 yards on the last drive. They went 90 yards in 10 plays without completing a pass. USC, you should be ashamed of yourself for that. But you played good defense for the rest of the most of the game. But still, this was a absolute good win for Michigan. But if you're a Michigan fan, this should scare the hell out of you because there's no way that you're gonna be able to win 12 games this year like this. There's no way you're gonna be able to beat Ohio State, Penn State, Ohio and Oregon, all with offense like this. It ain't happening. So while you can be happy here, you should be nervous and saying, oh, we gotta figure something else out. But now we gotta get to the five worst performances in college football in week four. Um, the worst of the worst was North Carolina versus James Madison, 70 to 50. North Carolina gave up 70 points to James Madison. When I was, so on my six screens that I had, this was not one of the games that was up. But when I saw the, the score, once other ones became blowouts, I was like, hold up. I turned it on right before halftime. James Madison had 40 something points and ended up with over 50 points at halftime. How do you give up 50 points at halftime when you're North Carolina to James Madison? I can understand if, you know, uh, the Tennessee's playing Western Kentucky or, or, or Arkansas A&M Tech. I can get it. North Carolina, I, I don't know what to make of that, but this is back to the drawing board. But the good news is you did put up 50 points. And there was a point where you actually almost made it a contest. But you couldn't get us. This North Carolina defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. Then the offense kept giving the ball back to James Madison, too. They had at least one pick six that I saw. This, this was terrible performance. Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Next team up, Kansas State. Fool's gold. They were on the best list last week. Last week, it was a 31-7 to win over Arizona. It looked good, but if you actually watched that game, you were you were like, oh, I didn't love this Kansas State offense. And that showed against BYU in their 38-9 to loss to BYU. Kansas State kept turning the ball over. They just couldn't score. The offense looked disjointed. They didn't have the cohesiveness that they needed. And part of it is starting with their young quarterback, Avery Johnson, who remember, they essentially pushed Will Howard out, who ended up at Ohio State. And Avery Johnson, he was going to be the guy. And yes, there are going to be some struggles that you have when you're starting to rush your freshman. But at the end of the day, you got to win football games. That's what the business is about. And you're going to be judged by that. The fourth team on this worst performances of week four is Auburn. Auburn lost to Arkansas 24 to 14. And you might be saying, George, it's an SEC game between two middling teams. Why is this the worst? Uh, because of what Hugh Freeze did after the game. And mind you, what he did in the offseason. Because Auburn was out of the market for transfer quarterbacks. He said, I'm not spending a million dollars on a transfer quarterback. I'm going to develop the guys that I have here, Peyton Thorne and the, the, the rest of the crew. And then after the game, after the Arkansas loss, they asked him what, what was going on. He said, we're going to find a quarterback who doesn't throw the ball to the other team. Now, mind you, he benched Peyton Thorne and had to come back to him. Oh, we're going to find somebody who doesn't throw the ball to the other team. I mean, so you have a choice, right? You chose to coach these guys up. So as a coach, you freeze, you got to get them better. Find somebody who won't throw the ball to the other team or go get you an NIL quarterback. Those are your options. But either way, 
Auburn fans were not expecting to be sitting at two and two at this point in time with losses to Cal and then to Arkansas because Sam Pittman was supposed to be the guy on the hot seat. Now, is Hugh Freeze on the hot seat? No. But Auburn fans, we, we know that y'all will fire y'all guy real quick. And the last team on the worst performances list, Northern Illinois. I'm like Tyra Banks. I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? All of that good work to beat Notre Dame and then to lose to Buffalo 23 to 20. Oh, your college football playoff hopes are done unless a miracle happens. So, but man, it is still a great Cinderella story against Notre Dame. But what happens at the end of the movie every time Cinderella's slipper always falls off? And you guys, those are the best and the worst performances this week in college football. Make sure that you like, subscribe, get notifications, tell a friend about the show. Peace out.